and greetings to all. I'm Dr. Nelson Soto, Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs. I'm here with President Karen Schuster Webb, speaking from the headquarters of Union Institute and University in our historic building in Cincinnati, Ohio. Allow me to welcome our graduates and their families from across the nation as we gather today to celebrate the class of 2020. As you know, this year has been a very unusual year for all of us. With your safety uppermost in our minds, we made a difficult decision to hold this year's commencement ceremonies as a virtual celebration. We know this cannot take the place of an in-person event, but we hope our ceremony today provides an opportunity for you to celebrate with your loved ones and mark your educational achievements. We trust you are gathered together safely and that you are ready to celebrate. This day is your day and you have earned it. Now it's my honor in the name of the administration and faculty to call to order Union Instituting University's 2020 commencement exercises. Please join me in watching and listening to the amazing voices of the So Children of Chicago under the direction of Dr. Walter Whitman. Dreams, vision, the desire to achieve greatness, it's in every one of us. So rise up, climb up, and realize that the world awaits your greatness. I can almost see that dream, that dream I'm dreaming. But there's a voice, there's a voice inside my head. Say you never reach you never reach it. But every step, every step I'm taking, every move, every move I make feels lost below direction. My faith is shaken, my faith is shaken. There's always going to be another mountain. Always going to be a big move. Always going to be an uphill battle. And sometimes, in a battle,
Thank you, so children of Chicago. You have set the stage for a great day of celebration. Let's climb. We now welcome the Reverend Dr. M. Merritt Worthen to deliver the invocation. Pastor Worthen is a 2020 graduate of our PhD program and serves as senior pastor at College Hill Community Church in Dayton, Ohio. Greetings, Union students, graduates, faculty, and staff. Won't you pray with me? Most gracious and loving God, our source of light and life, Lord, you are known by so many names in so many different languages and religions, but today I will just call you God. We pause now in the midst of this ceremony and celebration to offer praise and thanksgiving to the one who made this possible and who makes all things possible. As we come to the close of this incredible journey that we have shared together, we stand at this precipice overlooking a landscape of possibilities that are now opening before us. But before we go forward, we must look back, lest we forget from how far you have brought us. Through all of the struggles, trials, and tests along the way, you guided us and kept us, never letting go of our hands. When we wanted to give up, when some of us thought we couldn't make it another step, you renewed our strength and reminded us that you had not brought us this far to leave us. For you had planted deep within us seeds of vision, purpose, and potential that needed to reach their full maturity in us, not just for our own edification, but that our growth and accomplishments would be used to bless others around us. Therefore, let us not stop striving for knowledge, truth, justice, equity, peace, and kindness. Let this degree not just be a piece of paper or an, or an award on our walls, but a conduit for us to make a positive difference and contribution to this present world and to the great cloud of witnesses that have preceded us and for generations to come. Let us not come seeking self-satisfaction, but striving for the betterment of creation that surrounds us, groaning as in labor in anticipation of the glory that you have in store for our world. We also cannot help but thank you for the people you put in our paths to support us along the way and who helped make this journey more endurable and joyful with their support, prayers, and presence. Lord, we thank you for the colleagues who accompanied us, our cohort and the cohorts who preceded and those that are following us, for they provided caring company, kindness and wisdom along the way. And for those who were unable to complete this journey, we bring them with us in spirit for they are all a part of this incredible experience that we call learning. We thank you for our families and friends that supported, encouraged, and sustained us, allowing us to devote our time and energy oftentimes away from them, yet willing to make the sacrifice because they believed in our success. We hope that they know they share in this accomplishment, for no person is an island, and we appreciate them letting us draw from their love and strength that often renewed and refreshed us at some of our weakest moments. Finally, Lord, we offer gratitude and thanks for the faculty and staff of Union who poured into us wisdom, kindness, and encouragement, becoming our extended family in the midst of this shared pursuit. We sh they shared with us, challenged us, frustrated us, and affirmed us all at the same time, and we are better for it. Now that we've looked back, we turn our eyes and attention forward to the future that eagerly awaits us. For this is not the end of our journey, but the beginning of many more. Let us not sit on our accomplishments, but use them to fuel us to grow stronger, aim higher, become better, for there are no limits to what we can accomplish through you. For eyes have not seen, ears heard, nor mind imagined what God has in store for those who love him. To God be the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Worthen, for blessing this day of celebration for us. Today, we celebrate with two groups of graduates. In one ceremony, we honor our undergraduate students from across the country. We are streaming another ceremony at the same time, focused on those who have earned their master's degree or the PhD. Please review the commencement program sent to you for details about those we honor today. It is also available on our website. I first want to take a moment to recognize our faculty, the very vital members of Union Institute and University team who every day work tirelessly on behalf of Union students, especially this year. All our lives are enriched by their intellect, humanity, their dedication, and their unmatched commitment to Union students and our mission. 
We thank them for their extraordinary service and for persisting throughout these unprecedented times. It is now my pleasure to recognize the recipients of the faculty awards initiated by Union's Faculty Council, as noted in your program. This year, her peers awarded Dr. Sarah Berg, Assistant Director of the Masters of Arts program and faculty in our undergraduate and master's program with the 2020 Award for Excellence in Teaching. Dr. Annie Lee, a professor in our general education program, received a certificate of distinction for teaching. Congratulations to both Dr. Berg and Dr. Lee, and thank you for your dedication and commitment. I now invite Dr. Carson Peep, faculty in our doctoral program, to announce the winners of the Sussman Award, our PhD program's award for dissertation excellence. Thank you. It is my honor to announce the recipients of the Marvin Sussman Award for 2020. Longtime Union Corp professor, the late Dr. Marvin Sussman, established this award to honor a recent Union graduate whose doctoral dissertation is judged to be clearly outstanding in terms of originality, interdisciplinarity, social meaning, writing, and overall presentation. A committee of Union faculty select an annual recipient based on the quality of research and the impact their studies will have within the community at large. On behalf of the doctoral faculty, it is my honor to announce the following recipients of the 2020 Marvin B. Sussman Award. Dr. Linda Klickman for her dissertation, Widening Circles, a Grounded Theory Study of Workplace Leadership, and Catherine turley Sonny for her dissertation, Curating the Contemporary Art Witch Movement. The faculty also awarded honorable mentions to the following graduates for their stellar work. Dr. Alison Butcher and Dr. Emery Francois. Congratulations to all. Thank you, Dr. Peep, and I know all of us extend our congratulations to the awardees. Continuing to honor excellence, I asked Dr. Eldon Golden, Director of the Masters of Arts program and faculty in the MA and the PhD programs to announce the Brian Webb Award for graduates of the Master of Arts program. Thank you. The Brian Webb Award for Outstanding Master of Arts thesis was established by the Faculty of Union's Master of Arts program in memory of Dr. Brian Webb, who led the master's program for many years before his untimely passing. The award acknowledges and celebrates students who produced MA theses of exceptional quality deserving of public recognition. On behalf of the faculty of the Master of Arts program, I am pleased to announce the following graduates as recipients of the Brian Webb Award. Adrian Dieslin, Maya Fowler, Grace Goodwin Dwyer, and Petra Ann Roser. Congratulations to each of the awardees. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Golden, and congratulations to all. Now it's with great pleasure that I introduce Union Instituting University's president, Dr. Karen Schuster Webb. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this glorious day. I welcome each of you, bienvenido, and your loved ones. We wish we could be together to recognize and celebrate your achievements. We know that this has been a very unusual and a very difficult time of the pandemic and unrest. We know you have experienced even more obstacles than usual as you worked to complete your degree. You have been through so much, but your strength and determination, traits we knew you already had, have brought you to this moment here today. You were joined by faculty, fellow graduates, staff, trustees, and alumni from across the country. You are here despite the obstacles, despite the challenges, and against the odds, and we salute you. Today, you become a part of Union's unique and historic legacy. You are testament 
to the rewards that result from sheer hard work and drive. You inspire us and motivate us to always do better. And it is with you in mind that all of us at the university take this moment to collectively renew our commitment to the common good, to the beloved community that you, our graduates, bring to life. We are grateful to each of you for selecting Union to help you on your academic journey. And it is because of each of you and the more than 20,000 alumni who paved the way that Union has continued to perfect its mission, to provide creative and achievable pathways and solutions for students to be engaged, enlightened, and empowered to pursue a lifetime of learning, service, and social responsibility. We know you are mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, aunts, uncles, grandparents, sons and daughters. You are friends and mentors. Many of you have full-time jobs and careers, and you have earned your degrees by borrowing time from loved ones. You balanced your time and energy as you continued to fulfill your commitments. While we at Union salute each of you, allow me to recognize a few special groups of graduates today. We know many of you are the first in your family to earn a college degree. We celebrate you and commend you for taking this journey. We are so proud of you. We congratulate our many first responders. Today, we graduate peace officers, emergency responders, and firefighters. We graduate counselors, social workers, teachers, pastors, nonprofit leaders, and so many essential workers. All of us across the nation are in your debt. We thank you and we honor you today. Please join me as we acknowledge our veterans and current military for their service and sacrifice. We express our gratitude, appreciation, and respect. Thank you. To all our graduates today, we trust that your union education has empowered you to become change agents and leaders. We look to each of you in your own ways to continue to make a difference in your own communities, to serve others, and to carry the union legacy forward. In 1964, our founding president said, we want to change the face of American higher education. And that is exactly what Union has been doing for more than 50 years. We know that you will help us create a more perfect Union and support Union's unique legacy. I now have the pleasure to introduce our commencement speaker today. We are deeply honored to be joined today by the Honorable Danny K. Davis, who earned his PhD from Union in 1977. Congressman Davis has served as the U.S. Representative from Illinois' 7th Congressional District since 1996. The Congressman has spent his life championing social justice and is a servant leader whose life parallels Union's mission to transform lives and communities. He is a champion for higher education and the pursuit of equity of access to educational excellence. He has dedicated his career to the advancement of racial ethnic, and underrepresented populations in higher education. 
He is resolutely committed to preserving our democracy, protecting social security, and enhancing our national gains in civil and human rights. He has been throughout his career a fierce advocate for women's rights, voting rights, protection of the environment, consumer and labor protection, and ensuring quality, affordable health care for all. He has always fought on the side of justice in creating legislation for job creation, to fight poverty, to improve access and affordability for higher education, and has worked diligently for youth and criminal justice reform. Congressman Davis is a significant voice in Congress and has served on numerous committees, including the Committee on Ways and Means, he is a member of the Congressional Black Caucus, the Progressive Caucus, the Urban Caucus, Community Health Centers Caucus, the Congressional Caucus on Black Men and Boys, and a co-chair of the Congressional Caucus on Reentry. Throughout the years, Congressman Davis has been a friend to union and to higher education for all. He has welcomed us to his office and hosted events in Washington, D.C. We thank him for his life's work, his dedication to higher education, and his service to others. Graduates, families, and friends, it is with deep respect that I present our proud union alumnus and esteemed congressional representative, the Honorable Dr. Danny K. Davis. Life is but a minute, just 60 seconds in it, forced upon us. We didn't seek it and we didn't choose it, couldn't refuse it. We suffer if we abuse it, just a tiny minute, but eternity is in it. It's always good to see my good friend Walt Whitman and the soul children of Chicago. Thank you. President Webb, trustees, members of the faculty, staff, graduates, and friends of the Union Institute. I am indeed pleased, humbled, and excited to share with you in this 2020 commencement ceremony. Thank you, President Webb, for the wonderful things you said about me in your introduction. However, I was thinking of my mother who taught us that Flattery like perfume is to be smelled and not swallowed. She was of the opinion that fools would swallow flattery by the mouthful, but drink truth drop by drop. Nevertheless, I thank you for your kind words, and I will try to impart and convey a little bit of truth as I see it. Please know that I regard my presence here today as both an opportunity and a challenge. It is an opportunity to commend and congratulate each one of you graduates for having the discipline, staying power, doing the research, and meeting all of the requirements for an outstanding institution to confer upon you the academic credential which you have rightly earned and deserved. I urge you to use it to the benefit of our greater public interest. And as I indicated, it is also a challenge. A challenge to see if I might be able to say a word or two which will help motivate, stimulate, and perhaps activate you to increase your pursuit of helping America get closer to that more perfect union that is illuminated in our Constitution, which promised equal treatment, equal opportunity, equal protection, and equal justice. All of these have been elusive and more than difficult to achieve. And yet, despite these challenges, with honest struggle, hard work, pain, frustration, education, sacrifice, and in many instances, even death, we have made progress. 
Yes, we've made some progress, but we're not any place near to where we need to be and ought to be. My father used to say, if we get too carried away with what we've already done, we will never realize how much we can really do. And I caution that we cannot get to the basement and act as if we're in the penthouse. There can be no denial that we as a nation and our world, as a global entity, is in the throes of a pandemic that is wreaking havoc on our way of living. Massive deaths, illnesses off the chart, economic disruptions, unparalleled unemployment, business shutdowns, every aspect of life as we know it is disrupted. But the big question is not what the problems are, but more importantly, what do we do about them? Yes, we see poverty, unemployment, sickness, huge disparities in health, education, social welfare, law enforcement, police brutality, judicial protection, housing, home ownership for minorities. In 1776, a group of men put together a document labeled Constitution of the United States of America. They decreed that all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. And among them are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Yet, women did not get the right to vote in this country until a little more than a hundred years ago. And in 2016, earned only 81 cents to every dollar earned by men doing the same work. And if we take into consideration part-time work, it would be even less. Slavery has been abolished and African-Americans are no longer being counted as three-fifths of a person. But there have recently been efforts to not have many of them counted at all. Dr. W.B. Du Bois said that the problems of the 20th century would be the color line. And unfortunately, it looks as though his prognosis is correct. After years of hard won progress, it is difficult for many people in our country to believe what we are seeing today. There are serious efforts underway to pit low and moderate income populations against each other on the basis of race and national origin. While the rich and well-to-do increase their control of power and the distribution of resources. The big issues in our society are health care for all, poverty reduction, work opportunities for all, homelessness reduction, education access for all, immigration reform, environmental protection, climate change aggression, equal police treatment by law enforcement, equal protection for all by our judicial system, police accountability, protection of our democracy in principles and practices, mass incarceration, especially disproportionately among African-American and Latinx males. The most poverty-stricken population in America are our children, and we must protect them at all costs. The corona pandemic has put a bright light on the many disparities and inequities in our society. Based upon a myriad of contributing factors, among them are structural racism, classism, sexism, greed, desire for dominance and control, and in some instances, pure hate. The Kerner Commission report concluded in 1967 that America was moving towards two societies one black and one white, separate, unequal. I say one rich and one poor. 
with those in the middle being squeezed. The discrimination, segregation, manipulation, power grabbing, domination, and unfairness have long permeated much of American life. We see a dangerous, inevitable increase in tensions and confrontation, but violence alone cannot build a better society. Disruption and disorder nourish repression, not justice. The community cannot and will not tolerate coercion and mob rule in the streets of America. But we must guarantee and protect the rights of every person to peacefully assemble and express their views. It is in the document, in the Constitution. There are no simple solutions for complex problems. It is clear that we need a cogent path forward, one that respects the rights, privileges, hopes, dreams, and legitimate aspirations of all if we are to see positive results. Unfortunately, there are individuals and groups in our country who are stoking the flames of racism, bigotry, and hate so that America could never reach the potential of its greatness. And we must never give in to this type of backward thinking. As I close, let me say thank you to one of my classmates at the Union. Dr. C.T. Vivian, one of Dr. Martin Luther King's top lieutenants and a lion of the civil rights movement who passed away earlier this year. Thank you, C.T. And if my good friend and colleague, John Lewis was here, John might say to the graduate, take your degrees and go out and get into good trouble. But I leave you and I challenge you with the words of Margaret Walker when she said, let a new earth arise, let another world be born, let a bloody peace be written in the sky, let a second generation full of courage issue forth, let a people loving freedom come to grow, let a beauty full of healing and a strength of final clinching be the pulsing in our spirits and our blood. Let the marital songs be read. Let the dirges disappear. Let a race of men and women, of people, now rise up and take control. You are that race. Congratulations, and I thank you very much. Thank you, Congressman Davis, for your inspiring and memorable address. Thank you for your selfless work and for your challenging us to lead from wherever we find ourselves. Thank you for sharing in this day of celebration for new graduates of Union Institute and University. I am now pleased to continue our ceremony as we present the graduates. Thank you, Congressman Davis. We are honored and inspired by your passion and your life's work. I am now pleased to present the graduates from the following programs, Master of Arts, Master of Arts with a major in Clinical Mental Health Counseling, Master of Education, Master of Science in Organizational Leadership, and a Doctor of Philosophy in Interdisciplinary Studies. The faculty, registrar, and I certify that each person to be named will have completed, by the date indicated on his or her official transcript, all requirements for the degree program agreed upon. Graduates commencing with each degree will be presented in alphabetical order. Allow me to mention that we have bestowed a posthumous degree today. MSL graduate Stephen Taylor passed away in August. Stephen was also a graduate of our bachelor's program in criminal justice management and had just finished his master's degree. A stellar student and dedicated public servant, Stephen leaves 
his wife, Shannon, and children, Megan, Chelsea, Stephen, Lauren, and Benjamin. We extend our collective condolences to his family, friends, and co-workers, and we share his loss with them. Melanie Akon. Robin Ann Bermudez. Kenita Shenevert. Talia Perlutsky. Adriana Cuevas Velarde. I wanted to say thank you to all the awesome faculty and preceptors I've had along the way, and a huge thank you to my husband. I love you so much. Christina Copeland. Elisa Gillespie. Big thanks to Dan, Natalie, and Hazel for all of your help and patience over the past two years. I couldn't have done it without you, and I love you. Janet Kathleen Kempf. David Kowalczyk. Tommy Lofgren. I am so thankful for everyone who's helped me succeed in my personal growth. My beautiful, amazing fiance and my family. I love all of you. Thank you so much. Maribel Milliken. Stephanie Ann Wayman. Robin LaShawn Johnson. I love Jesus. I just love you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for my master's degree. Bless you, God. To God be the glory. Weston Allen Atchison. Twakila D. Eatman. Carmen Yvonne Gaines. Dandrea Gray. Danielle Jones. David John Marks. Omar Suarez. Stephen Taylor. Allison Christina Boudet. Julie Burns. Liz DeBetta. Jonathan Frank Christian Blas Diaz. Greta Enriquez. Emery Francois. Linda J. Kligman. Jennifer M. Kramer Wine. Jacinda Lewis. Ernest Eli Simotuk. Nancy Lou Diane Simotuk. Willie Anthony Sinkfield. Vanessa M. Stretch. Catherine Turley Sani. Janine Danette Wallace. Just want to say thanks, everybody. We did it. Dr. J, PhD. Woo! M. Merritt Worthen. 
Congratulations to our masters and PhD graduates. It is now my honor to invite Vice Chair of the Board of Trustees, Mr. Edgar Smith, to confer the degrees for today's graduates. Trustee Smith. On behalf of the Union Institute and University Board of Trustees, it is now my pleasure to confer the degrees to those present as listed in today's program. Reviewing the recommendations of the faculty and academic program administrators, and by virtue of the authority granted to the Board of Trustees of Union Institute and University by the states of Ohio, California, and Florida. I confer upon you, who previously have completed requirements for the degree of Master of Arts, Master of Arts with a major in Clinical Mental Health Counseling, Master of Education, Master of Science in Organizational Leadership, and Doctor of Philosophy in Interdisciplinary Studies, all rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations to all. Congratulations, felicidades. We can almost hear the cheering, applause, and the celebration happening across the country. I now welcome Dr. Randy Danielson, a 2003 doctoral alumnus who directs the Doctor of Medical Science program at A.T. Still University. As president of Union's International Alumni Association, he will welcome you as our newest alumni. Dr. Danielson. Thank you, uh, Provost Soto and President Webb, and greetings to all of you. It's my honor to bestow two very special awards, the Distinguished Alumni Award and the Alumni Legacy Award. I urge everyone to read more about our recipients in today's program. Please join me in congratulating Rudolph C. Reiser, PhD, 1996, as recipient of the 2020 Distinguished Alumni Award. Dr. Reiser is a member of the Cowlitz Indian Tribe and founder of the Center for World Indigenous Studies. He is internationally recognized as the principal architect and spokesperson of theories and principles of fourth world geopolitics. Throughout his career, Dr. Reiser has contributed to policies and laws affecting American Indians and indigenous peoples, including the development of the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples and the UN World Conference on Indigenous Peoples. He is the author of several seminal books. Dr. Reiser has always advocated for diversity and inclusion. With integrity and compassion, he has enacted his pursuit of social justice on a global scale. So congratulations, Dr. Reiser. The Alumni Board is also named Ohio State Senator Cecil Thomas, BS 2012, as the recipient of the 2020 Legacy Alumni Award. As a Cincinnati police officer for 27 years, Senator Thomas worked to improve minority representation, increasing the percentage of African Americans and women on the force to 40%. Senator Thomas served as the executive director of the Cincinnati Human Relations Commission and served on the Cincinnati City Council for eight years. In 2014, he was elected to represent Ohio's 9th Senate District. He serves as assistant minority leader and as the ranking member of the Senate Judiciary Committee, as well as other committees. Senator Thomas is a public servant who demonstrates his commitment to learning service and social responsibility in everything he undertakes. Congratulations, Senator Thomas. Thank you both for your exemplary work, your selfless service and the knowledge, insight and grace you have brought to others. Your fellow union alumni are grateful for your work and commend you as you continue to bring esteem and distinction to our alma mater. Congratulations. Now back to you, class of 2020. From this day forward, you are a graduate with new responsibilities. As a new alum, I ask you to join me in the following three efforts. First, display that diploma with pride. You earned it. Second, recruit a new student to union. And third, please pay your education forward by contributing to one of union's many scholarship funds. Give what you can. Your contributions make a difference and help the next student arrive where you are today. So please visit myunion.edu slash give back to contribute. And now by the authority vested in me 
by the International Alumni Association Board, I induct you individually and as the 2020 graduation class as official members of Union's International Alumni Association. So welcome, your fellow alumni congratulate you. Thanks so much. Thank you, Dr. Danielson. Please welcome Dr. Webb once again. Thank you, Alumni Association, and congratulations to Dr. Reiser and Senator Thomas. Before we close today, I want to take a moment for our new graduates to acknowledge all the family members and loved ones who have supported you throughout your journey. We recognize all parents and grandparents of the graduates. We recognize all spouses and significant others. We recognize all children and grandchildren of the graduates. We recognize all brothers and sisters and all other family members. Friends and coworkers, we acknowledge you and our hearts go out to all who have been impacted by the pandemic. While I am unable to see you, we know you are there alongside your graduate, just as you have been throughout their journey. Graduates, please take a moment to thank these dedicated people for investing in you and your education and providing such dedicated support. To each of you, we wish you all success, health, happiness, and hope you will stay close to Union. Congratulations, felicidades, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you, President Webb. Congratulations again to all of our graduates across the country. We thank you all for joining us today. Be sure to join the Zoom meeting room set up for your degree program. Your faculty will join you to congratulate you and meet your family. Dr. Webb and I will also pop in to extend our congratulations. In closing, on behalf of the faculty, President Webb, and all of us at Union Institute and University, I call our 2020 National Commencement Exercises to a close. And now, a final performance from the Soul Children of Chicago.
Oh, 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 oh,